Uh, for more on what the hell is going on, well, I want to bring in Brian Dean Wright, a former CIA operations officer and the host of the Wright Report broadcast. He joins us now. Hello, Brian. Good to have you with us, sir. Good, sir. Pleasure to be here. Uh, it is, it's, is, it, is it weird to hear a guy like James Carville say on TV that it's time to, you know, undertake some wet work against Donald Trump? Yeah, he doesn't exactly look like one of my former colleagues. He doesn't look like a CIA guy. But, hey, you know, who knows now? Uh, things are changing at Langley these days. You know, well, less than one week ago, uh, I believe, it was Mr. Trump who used the word bloodbath, and he got a lot of heat for that. Uh, yeah. People talking about how rhetoric is awful and terrible. Now we've got this guy talking about ethnic using CIA terms. So the party groups of folks who hate bad rhetoric are actually kind of okay with it, uh, it depending on who they're shooting it at, I guess. That's the yes. lesson there. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's interesting he brings up the CIA because um, we keep finding out evidence that it appears the CIA is actually uh, actively involved in, in doing at least some election meddling here in the United States of America. There was a report yesterday that a new whistleblower has come forward to Congress alleging that the, the Central Intelligence Agency has been interfering in federal investigations into the Biden family. The whistleblower alleging that the CIA intervened in August of 2021, this would be well into Biden's presidency, to prevent IRS investigators from interviewing the guy who's paying off all of Hunter Biden's tax debts. That would be Kevin Morris. Um, is, it, is it typical for the CIA to get involved in domestic investigations? Yes and no, but, but mostly no. So let's talk about what probably happened here. <clears throat> this Morris guy is out uh, wherever he is in the country. He is probably an asset. So he's either providing cover services for the CIA, uh, that is to say housing other agents or assets, or he himself is an asset or an agent. Uh, and if that's the case, either way, he is collecting money. And if the IRS is coming to his door, knocking on it, saying, hey, we want to talk to you about money, uh, and uh, how you're loaning and out to guys like Hunter Biden, well, he probably called up what's called his handler, the operations officer, guys like me, and says, uh, I got the IRS and the DOJ knocking on my door. You want to deal with this? Because they're going to ask questions and I can't answer them. So that's what I expect happened in this case. That means that his handler went back to Langley and said, look, we got a problem. And this went all the way up to what's called the seventh floor, which would be the CIA director, William Burns. Of course, that is a Biden appointee. So now we got a Biden appointee deciding if Joe Biden and his family should be investigated, just like we do at the Biden FBI and the Biden DOJ. So this is when it, it should become a little bit alarming to most of us to say we have reasonable allegations to want to continue to investigate this family, uh, Mr. Biden and his son Hunter. And yet we have one more three letter agency who's getting involved and thwarting it at some level. So that's the allegation. I could see it happening. And it, there has got to be a very, very long trail to this in terms of so, it being documented in emails and cables. So if the CIA is actually actively meddling in a DOJ investigation like this, that's the red flag that came up for you. You, you think Kevin Morris is likely then an asset of the CIA? I, I would guess that that's the case, yes. Okay. So, so it's not – and it's also, as I mentioned, not the first time that the CIA has popped up in the Hunter Biden coverage. Um, the New York Post had a story some time ago about how the CIA was, uh, you had active members of the CIA who were involved in signing off on the letter that was involved with those 51 former intelligence agents who were making the claim that the Hunter Biden laptop was merely Russian disinformation. In fact, the Post reported at the time the CIA conspired with the former acting director, Mike Morrell, and the Biden campaign to produce that letter, falsely claiming that the emails from Hunter Biden's laptop were Russian disinformation. Uh, again, why would the CIA be involved in drafting a letter with political consequences here in the United States? Well, that, that is just straight up propaganda. Those, those folks who are all affiliated with the, either the Democrat Party or Mr. Biden or Hillary Clinton or just simply hated Donald Trump, they engage in attack on this country. Let's be very, very honest about that. That letter was an assault on the nation. They knew precisely what they were doing, which is they were using the, the, the smear of being working, uh, having worked at the CIA and, and so forth, to say, hey, we, we have inside information about this laptop, or we have inside information about the Trump-Russia collusion story, and just trust us that we know what we're doing and that there's really, really bad stuff about Trump-Russia, and there's nothing to worry about regarding this laptop. That, of course, is election interference. They knew precisely what they were doing. It was an assault on the country because they did not want Trump to win, mm -hmm. um, and, and they got their way. They, they buried a major story. Uh, that should have been incredibly important for all Americans, which is that we likely have someone in the White House yes. who was compromised by foreign powers.
But the, at the time, and even until this very day, so many of them hide behind the idea that, oh, well, we were all retired from government service, therefore you can't blame the intel community for this. But as, as the Post pointed out at the time, uh, you had Mike Morrell, the former CIA director, going to the CIA's pre-publication classification review board, called the PCRB for short, and telling them he needed a rush job in order to get this talking point out. And they happily obliged to get this talking point out right in the middle of the campaign, designed to suffocate the coverage of how the Biden family was making its money. Yeah. They called in a favor, and they got it. Yeah. And that's precisely what the goal was. Um, and that, that just underlines the point and the fear, I think, the reasonable fear of most Americans, which is to say, we've got a bunch of, of folks at the Bureau, at the agency, the NSA, who are deciding that they know what's best for America, and they're going to act on it, irrespective of your vote or your preferences. It is they who will guide the nation forward, not you. And that is the, the horrifying reality that we know is not just a conspiracy theory. Of course, Senator, uh, Senator Chuck Schumer went on Rachel Maddow's show years ago and said that six ways to Sunday is what the, the intel community can do to get back at politicians. So we know that it's real, and we're seeing example after example of the fact that it is real, and it's awful. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to play some audio, I think, coming up uh, in the program. But I, I was curious if you got a chance to see Mike Benz, the uh, cybersecurity expert, the guy uh, making claims about how he thinks that actually the Hunter Biden story really is a story about the CIA's involvement in Ukraine. Have you seen this? I did see the clip. Yeah. And what do you think of that allegation that that what this what's happening here is not that uh, they're just merely covering up for the Biden family in terms of how they're making money, but that there may have been CIA involvement in trying to reorient the Ukrainian energy industry towards NATO and away from Russia. And that's what they're trying to cover up here. You know, anymore, I, it, I would have told you five, 10 years ago that I wouldn't have believed it to be true. Yeah. But now after we've had two special counsel reports, we've had inspector general uh, report from the, uh, the uh, DOJ. Talking about lawlessness at the FBI, talking about uh, lack of strict fidelity by the IC, anything is now possible. I don't trust any of them, and I think if we had thoughtful oversight in the House and the Senate, they would be digging into this stuff. It is a legitimate concern. It's a legitimate fear, and it ought to be investigated. But sadly, I don't know who's going to do that at this point. Our, our House and Senate are so dysfunctional. Yeah, no, they, they definitely are. All right, let me, let me move to some other issues then, uh, which is – you know, there there's uh, there have been a couple of lefties, uh, powerful lefties who've got their hands in the intelligence community making claims lately that uh, as the nominee for the Republican Party, Donald Trump is entitled to security briefings. Uh, but folks like John Brandon and Adam Schiff say that the intel community should mislead Trump about the extent of intelligence, that they should downplay uh, what they actually know. Here's John Brennan making this claim recently. I have to start with the news today with you, Director Brennan, that um some version of our intelligence analysis will um there's a plan for trump to start getting that while he's under criminal prosecution for mishandling classified documents will you explain what this is and 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 what what, what you think is likely to happen Anna Nicole, it's uh, somewhat surreal that an individual who is under indictment for mishandling classified information is going to be getting classified intelligence briefings. But it, this traditionally is provided to the candidates for president uh, by the sitting president. Um, and so therefore, I think it makes sense for the Biden administration to offer that to Donald Trump. Now, I'm pretty certain that my former intelligence colleagues will provide briefings that are not going to do any type of damage to sources and methods. Uh, in terms of providing information to Donald Trump that he could misuse. But they will provide analytic overviews and briefings about some of the world's hotspots, uh, letting, them, letting uh, Donald Trump know what the assessments are at this point. So I think it's going to be analysis that will be devoid of the sources and methods, the sensitive things that we are most concerned about, the types of things that were in all those documents that he had in the bathroom and other areas in Mar-a-Lago. But I, I do think it makes sense. Now, it's a question about whether or not Donald Trump will accept the briefings. Uh, and I'm sure that if he does accept them, he probably will disparage them as he has disparaged U.S. intelligence officers as well as U.S. intelligence itself uh, for so long over so many years. I'll spare you having to listen to Adam Schiff, but he made the same claim on television. And basically what, the, what these men are saying is that Donald Trump should be given a deceitful briefing, should be, un, should, should be given a handicapped briefing uh, that a candidate would otherwise be entitled to. What do you make of that? Well, two things. Again, this just underlines the fact that the deep state, the administrative state is real, and it, it continues to attack the voters out there who want to choose 
whomever they want, if they're not good enough in the eyes of John Brennan, then they're going to do what they got to do. So the first, that is the most important piece. The deep state is real. Second, Brennan is saying this as Joe Biden is under investigation. In fact, we know now he had classified information going back to the 1970s in his garage next to his weed whacker. So you can't tell me that, that we, we, we have this, this equal set of rules in Washington, that, that Joe Biden is getting not only this daily brief, but he's demonstrated over the years that he is irresponsible in terms of his handling of not only intel, but the classified sources and methods. So if we want to have a, a one set of rules, that's fine. Make sure they apply to everybody. But what's clear is that in Brennan's eyes, they only apply to a guy like Trump or Republicans, people he don't, uh, that he doesn't like. That is the issue. Either we have rules for everybody or we have rules for nobody, and it's now anarchy. And that's really what we've got. We've got a place like a, a Pakistan or an Egypt where we've got these intel agencies and military officers running the country with this veneer of democracy. That's yes. the moment in which we live. Yeah, and and the other piece, you know, Brandon mentioned it at the end that you know Donald Trump may not even want to accept these briefings. Uh, and if I was in Trump's shoes, I might be inclined to take that position, not to take briefings from an intel community that has worked so actively against me in the past. I mean, if you look at both the Trump campaign as well as Senators Ron Johnson and Chuck Grassley, uh, there have been allegations throughout that the intel community has given briefings as a predicate to leak information to the press about the conversations that they're having with those candidates. Uh, it's and and in fact, uh, the, you know, the intel community was actively spying on Trump and his campaign during the briefings of the Trump campaign. Uh, so this is all the more reason that you may want to actually reject receiving intel briefings, don't you think? I, I think that's a fair argument, and I think what a, what a person might want to do if indeed uh, Trump wins the presidency, wait until he becomes the president, fire most of the senior leaders at the CIA and others, put in his own team, and then get caught up uh, on on all the latest. Uh, intel as well as sources and methods because th that is the safest way that you're going to be able to handle this what is now a threat within your own intel community i think it's yeah. a reasonable position and i think the president would be smart to consider it all right brian dean wright again former cia operations officer and the host of the excellent Wright report podcast sir thank you very much for your time today